Hello, good evening. So we are going to begin uh, the session number three. Uh, we are almost done with um, the course because you know that it, we are going to end the module tomorrow. So we're going to have just one more uh, session after this one. So we're going to continue with the things that we were like uh, learning in the days before and um, maybe it could like feel like this is the first day of the week but you know that uh, we are in the session number three so we have three days of this week and we are going to end tomorrow the session. Así que vamos a comenzar con la sesión número tres. Vamos a continuar donde nos quedamos el día martes. Eh, recuerden que um, estuvimos hablando de los uh, the years, estuvimos hablando de los años, and we have an exercise that we need to complete right now, eh, in which you have the years on the document, um, and you need to pronounce the name of the numbers or the correct way um, to say the years related to the things that we were learning um, in the days before. So we are going to begin with that part and we are going to pronounce the numbers uh, like the things that we were learning on Thursday. Así que vamos a hacer el ejercicio de la pronunciación de los números, así como lo aprendimos en la sesión anterior. And you have these numbers on the document, so I let those numbers there for you uh, in that session. So at this time, you need to, to tell me the numbers. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14. We have 14 numbers and we are going to pronounce one by one. So for the first one, what is the pronunciation of this one? ¿Cuál es la pronunciación de este número que tenemos acá? Nineteen sixty-five. Yes, nineteen sixty-five. Remember that we need to um, separate the numbers. Necesitamos separar los números. Así que lo vamos a decir de eh, en parejas. Solo a partir del dos mil eh, lo vamos a ir diciendo eh, como two thousand y el número que tengamos. E igual los números que lleven del 01 al 09, acuérdense que lleva una letra. Next one, we are going to go down. This one, what is the pronunciation? 1235. Yes, 1235. Now, this one. Thank it, it, 10 Yes, we can say 10 one and also we can say 1001. The um, two different pronunciations are correct. Next one. 1902. 1902. Good. Next one. 1193. Good. 1193. Now we have this one. 
2015. In this case, we are going to use a different pronunciation for the uh, this year, 2015. Remember that when we were 2015. Okay. Yes, in this oh, case. dijo que del 2000 para arriba. Exactamente. Okay. 2000, del 2010 más que todo, del 2010 para arriba vamos a utilizarlo de esa forma. Now, okay. this one. Thirteen, oh, 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 zero, zero. One thousand, three hundred. Almost, but let me go to this part. This one. Thirteen hundred. Uh -huh. okay. When a year ends in zero, zero, then okay. they say it as the digit before zero, zero, and then hundred. So in this okay. case we have. 1300. Cuando tenemos dos ceros. Okay, 1300. Yes, le vamos a poner el número que tenemos antes de los ceros y le agregamos 100. Now, this one. 2009 o 2009. 2009. Mm -hmm. 2009. Now, this one. 2000. 2000. Next one. 1522. 15, 22. 15, 22. 15, 22. Now. 22. Yes. Now this one. 2000, 80. 80. Uh -huh. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. 18. <laughs> three thousand two hundred forty five. Yes, thirty two forty five. This one nineteen ninety eight. Good nineteen ninety eight. And this one that is the last one. Fourteen fourteen. Four. 34. Good, 14, uh, 34. So there we have the numbers and that is the last part of that topic. Así que ahí tenemos los años, esta era la práctica de los años um, para que vayamos nosotros, ¿verdad? Haciendo esas eh, prácticas. Ahora vamos a cambiar de tema, esa era la última parte que nos quedaba ahí. Y ahora vamos a cambiar y vamos a ver las WH questions. But in this case, uh, we are going to see two different um, categories because we are going to use a WH questions with D and also we are going to use WH question with was and where. Vamos a tener dos tipos de preguntas. Una con did, o sea, el WH word, las what, when, where, who, utilizando el did. Y luego vamos a tener las mismas WH words, pero utilizando el was y el where. Así que vamos a tener como dos categorías. Mm, it is not a very long topic, so I think we are going to see the vocabulary then. Así que creo que vamos a tener como una parte de, del tiempo, vamos a hablar de las WH questions with did and was and where, y luego vamos a pasar al vocabulario related to school, que está relacionado con la escuela, but we are not going to talk about book, not book, eh, bag, backpack, eraser. We are going to see more words related to school than those. Vamos a ver muchas más palabras que no estén tanto relacionadas con los útiles escolares, sino con lo que encontramos alrededor también o acciones que nosotros hacemos en las escuelas. Y no solo en las escuelas, sino también en las universidades. So, we are going to begin with WH questions. With the... Was... Ese sería con el, con el auxiliar. Yes, este sí va, va primero el, el WH word y luego agregamos el auxiliar did o el auxiliar was and where. Y luego ya agregamos lo que es el sujeto. Okay. So we are going to see the first one that is WH questions. 
with did. Estas son las primeras. Vamos a ver las que llevan did primero. So in this case that uh, we have different type of questions and we already know that um, the type of question we will be focusing on right now are the questions with did. Did is a word in English that is used to make simple past questions. You know that when we are using did is when we are making simple question in past because in that case, this is the auxiliary that we use to create questions uh, in past, and they are very, very simple. So in this case, we can see this kind of questions. We have two different types of question. We have the number one, that is when we use the auxiliary, and we have did she rent a car for the trip. Esta es una pregunta bastante básica en pasado simple. Did she rent a car for the trip? Ella rentó un carro para el viaje. But also we can have WH words or WH questions. Why did, what did she rent? An additional car. That she ran a car for the trip. For the trip. Why did she rent an additional car for the trip? ¿Por qué ella rentó un carro adicional para el viaje? In the first one, uh, is a close question and we can say, yes, yeah, she did or no, she um, didn't. But in the second one, why did she rent an additional car for the trip? We can say, oh, because um, she needs more space or because she is going to use another car for um, the place that we're going to because it is like a mountain or something like that. But we can extend our answer in the second one. So how to make question with did? We're going to begin with the auxiliary at the beginning of the statement. And then we're going to see the WH question. Siempre vamos a ir haciendo como la comparación entre las preguntas con auxiliar y las, las preguntas con WH words. So siempre vamos a ver los dos tipos de preguntas. So the structure that we use for the simple past uh, questions is the plus pronoun or subject plus the verb plus the question mark. And we have two examples. Did she live? Did she live? And the second one, did she do exercises? And then for the open questions, we have WH word plus D plus the subject plus the verb plus the question mark. And we have two examples. Where did you go? Where did you go? And the next one, what did you do? So we're going to see um, a short list of closed questions using did, and then we are going to see another short list of open questions with did, but also using the WH words. And then we are going to 
uh, see the other kind of uh, question with was and where, because this is a very, very short topic. This is just like a review on how to create question, but that is not kind of long. So we're going to see the list of closed questions. And we have the list. Number one, did you watch any movies last night? Did you watch any movies last night? Number two, did you go to the movies yesterday? Did you go to the movies? Number three, did you go to the gym this morning? Number four, did you do any exercises this morning? Did you help your brother with his homework? Did you help your brother? With his homework? Did you watch all Rick and Morty episodes in a week? Did you ask your girlfriend to marry you? Did you ask your girlfriend to marry you? Did you already finish your homework? Did you already finish your homework? And the last one, did you fail a class? Did you fail a class? And then we have some basic questions you seen uh, did at the beginning. Um, in that case, we are just using the auxiliary to make questions. And now we're going to see the other list. In this case, we are uh, going to see the WH uh, questions or the WH words uh, using the auxiliary did to make open questions. So we're going to have some examples of open questions. And we have, what did you do last night? What did you do last night? What did you do yesterday? What movie did you watch? What movie did you watch? How many episodes did you watch? 
how many episodes did you watch? What exercises did you do today? What classes did you take today? What test did you take today? How many classes did you fail? Where did you meet your girlfriend? Where did you meet your girlfriend? Where did you meet your husband? How did you learn English? What did you study? What did you learn today? Where did you go for your last holiday? What did you watch on TV last night? So here we have some of the uh, questions that we can create using WH words and also the auxiliary did. So in that case, you can see that um, we are using all of the, or many of the WH words that we have. In that case, in those examples, you have what, how, um, where, and also we can use why, um, how many, how much, and all of the WH words that we have in English. So in this case, now we're going to see the other part or the second category that is the questions um, with was and where. WH questions with was and where. So it is the same uh, situation like with the, the other questions, because we are going to see how to create question using the auxiliary was and where, and then how to use WH words to create a question using was and where. In this case, we know that was and where are two different words, but they have the same meaning they both mean to be, and they are used to talk about past events. En este caso, nosotros ya sabemos que el was y el were son dos palabras diferentes que significan lo mismo. En este caso es ser o estar, ¿verdad? Porque son el verbo to be, solo que ya están en pasado. Y obviamente están hablando de eventos que ya sucedieron. So, we are going to see the structure 
And also you know that we can use these uh, questions or these words to make close and open question. También vamos a hacer preguntas abiertas y cerradas con el was y el where. So it says that we can make, when we use was and where, we can make past progressive questions and verb to be question. En este caso también podemos hacer preguntas eh, que vayan en pasado progresivo y también en preguntas que se utilice solo con el verbo to be. So we're going to see the structure for the closed question. And in this case, we have was and where plus pronoun or subject plus the verb plus ing. En este caso estamos haciendo past progressive question. Preguntas con pasado progresivo. Por eso llevamos el ing. And we have here the example. Was she running? Was she running? And then we have the WH word um, in past progressive. And we have WH word plus was and where plus the subject plus the verb in, uh, in ing. And we have the example. Why was she running? ¿Por qué estaba corriendo? Then we have question just in simple uh, past. In this case, we are not going to use the W, I mean, we are not going to use the ING. Uh, we are just going to use the was and were at the beginning of the uh, statement. Ya vimos las que llevan el pasado progresivo. Ahora vamos a ver preguntas en pasado simple, solamente con el was y el were. Y no vamos a utilizar verbos con ing. En este caso tenemos para nuestra estructura was, where, plus, subject. Y aquí tenemos complemento, no usamos verbo. Complement. Plus, Question mark. Y tenemos el ejemplo. Was she, was she happy? Fue feliz. And for the open question, we have WH word plus was or where plus subject plus the complement, plus the question mark. Why was she happy? Why was she happy? ¿Por qué fue feliz? ¿Por qué estuvo feliz? Y vamos a ver la lista de preguntas utilizando el pasado progresivo. Um, Luego vamos a ver nada más preguntas que solo lleven was and where. O en este caso, yes, we are going to see um, open questions. We are going to see different, different lists. We have like three different lists. So we have the first one. Examples of questions using was and where past progressive. Let's do some past progressive.
let's see, I mean, it is a star. Okay, and here we have a closed open questions. Because in this case, we are going to make like a mix. Aquí vamos a mezclarla, no la vamos a poner tan separada, sino que todas las que vayan con was, en, van a ir primero, las que vayan con wh words y simplemente con was. Luego la vamos a hacer con where, open and close questions. And then we are just going to um, just to see some uh, open questions. Así que vamos a tener una, mez una mezcla de preguntas que vayan con was, tanto abiertas como cerradas, luego con where, y luego simplemente open questions. So the first one, what was she doing? What was she doing? What was he washing? He what? Chin. What was he talking about? What was he talking about? What was he listening to? What was he listening to? Why was she running? Why was she swimming? I mean, why was she swimming? Was she watching an action movie? Was she watching an action movie? Now we are going to see the second list that is questions using where. What were they doing? What were they? It's going to rain by now. Oh my God. What were they watching? What were you talking about? What were you listening to? Why were you running last night? Why were you swimming under this cold weather? Were you surfing? Were you watching a horror movie? Where, yes. And the last ones. We're going to end this topic with these questions. Vamos a terminar el tema con estas preguntas de acá. Porque es un tema bastante sencillo. Ya vimos de, el uso del, del was y el were in positive, negative, and questions. Eh, 
So this is just like the end of the topic. Why were you sad? Why was she happy? Who was with you? Who were you with? Where was she last night? Where were you yesterday morning? Así que aquí termina la parte de las preguntas con el WH words o con el auxiliar. Um, Ya que ya lo hemos visto con anterioridad y no es un tema eh, difícil porque ya lo estudiamos. En este caso, siguiendo las estructuras, vamos a hacer nosotros nuestras preguntas y vamos a utilizar las WH words cuando queramos hacer preguntas abiertas, que ya lo habíamos dicho antes. Si solo utilizamos el auxiliar did, had, were, and was, son eh, closed. Question. Solo son preguntas para respuestas de sí, no, tal vez. And when we're using WH words or WH questions, esas son preguntas abiertas que nos permiten a nosotros escuchar más de eh, una respuesta más larga de eh, lo que es el speaker. Now, let me take this uh, screen off. Voy a eh, quitar la pantalla un momento porque tenemos que ir a la plataforma a realizar lo que es el knowledge check. And we are going to make a review of the exercise. Así que vamos a ver el knowledge check, number two, because we did number one. And we are going to make a review of that knowledge check. Vamos a hacer ese review para los que no han trabajado en ese todavía. Recuerden que mañana ya tienen que haber terminado toda la plataforma. So we are going to see knowledge check number two. Give me a second. It's charging. Okay. Here we have. Let me put the screen again. So this is the knowledge check number two. And we are going to select the best answer to the question. Vamos a seleccionar la mejor respuesta para la pregunta que se nos hace ahí. Veamos un momento las preguntas. Vamos a ver un momento las preguntas y ya vamos a ver lo de las opciones. Así que les voy a dar uno o dos minutos para que lean la pregunta y ya vamos a ver las opciones. So, two minutes right now. Ok, let's see. Vamos a ver las respuestas o las opciones. En este caso, number one. Where were you born? Where were you born? Options. Her name was Yumiko in Hiroshima, Japan. 
She was really friendly. I wanted to improve my English. I grew up in Tokyo. It was a little scary. La pregunta es, ¿dónde nació? Y tenemos las diferentes opciones. ¿Cuál es la respuesta? Hiroshima, Japan. In Hiroshima, Japan. Good. Number two. Where did you grow up? ¿Dónde creciste? And we have different options. Her name was Yumiko in Hiroshima, Japan. She was really friendly. I wanted to prove my English. I grew, I grew up in Tokyo. It was a little scary. ¿Cuál es la opción para esa I grew up in Tokyo. I, I grew up in Tokyo. Good. How was your first day at school? ¿Cómo fue tu primer día en la escuela? She was real friendly. It was a little scary. It was a little scary. Ah, okay. It was a little scary. Fue un poco como que le dio un poco de miedo, ¿verdad? Que lo Who was your first friend in the school? ¿Quién fue su primer amigo o amiga en la escuela? Her name, her name was, was Yumiko. Yumiko. Ah, Yumiko. her name was Yumiko. What was she or he like? ¿Cómo era ella o él? She, she was, she was really friendly. friendly. Ah, she was really friendly. And the last one, what did you take this class? ¿Por qué tomaste esta clase? I want, I want, I want to, to improve my, my English. English. Ah, I wanted to improve my English. So in this case, we have the answer. We are going to check if they are correct. Una pregunta, teacher. Tell me. En la última respuesta, la C. La T, es que en clases anteriores me estaba recordando que la T no tiene sonido. Entonces, ah. ¿cómo, ¿cómo pronuncia este want, wanted? Wanted. En ese caso es como want it, como con i. Pero I la con n, o, en o I want it to improve my English. Pero es que ahí depende también de, eh, de la manera en la, en la que habla. Si habla muy rápido, ni se va a escuchar el sonido que hace al final. I want it to improve. Pero si habla despacio, lo va pronunciando un poco más, va gesticulando un poco más. Pero I, I think it's going to... Creo que se, se va a cortar la energía y se va a cortar el internet por un momento porque está lloviendo. Así que si se corta, no se vayan a, a asustar. Así que en ese caso okay. es solo, eh, más que todo, en la forma en la que pronunciamos y lo hacemos... Eh, más rápido, pero sí, sería como one it o como one chat si lo hacemos un poco más gesticulado. Ahí no hay eh, un eh, problema muy grande si lo hacemos de esa manera. I wanted to improve my English or I wanted to improve my English. Gracias. Okay, now we are going to continue. Vamos a detener esto y vamos a regresar al documento. Este, right now, I am like, I cannot listen very well, así que no puedo escuchar muy bien por el sonido de la lluvia, porque está bien fuerte ahorita. Así que si hay alguna duda o algo, eh, me la pueden escribir en el chat y yo voy a estar revisando porque casi no se oye. So, we are going to continue. And in this case, we are going to see a vocabulary. I was telling you that uh, we are going to um, learn new words. Or maybe you know all of this word because, I don't know. Vamos a ver muchas palabras están relacionadas con eh, la escuela y vamos a ir haciendo como una lista pero en este caso así como lo hicimos la vez pasada voy a ir poniendo las palabras en inglés vamos a ponerlas primero solo en inglés 
Y luego les vamos a ir dando como el sentido en español. So the first thing that we are going to do is to create the vocabulary or to write the vocabulary um, in the document. And then tomorrow we are going to make a review of the words that we have. Voy a dejar las palabras ahí y las vamos a ir poniendo en inglés primero para que ustedes las vayan leyendo, las vayan interpretando y también para que ustedes eh, ya mañana tengan una idea más o menos de qué significan esas palabras. Porque igual mañana vamos a ir dándoles el sentido o eh, leyéndolas en Spanish. Right now we are just going to see the English word for this vocabulary. Tomorrow we are going to see the eh, Spanish part of the vocabulary. Así que ahora solo vamos a ver la, el vocabulario totalmente en inglés y mañana vamos a ir interpretando ese vocabulario. So, I'm going to insert a table because it is better to have the information. So, I'm going to have like this. This is the first part. And let me move this one and I'm going to write the topic. Vocabulary related to a school. But I uh, remember that I'm not just talking about a basic uh, vocabulary. In this case, we are going to um, see some verbs also, um, spaces some things that we can uh, have on the classroom, um, some words that we can use at school, and also words that are referring to teaching. Vamos a ver palabras. Primero, vamos a ver verbos. Podemos encontrar muchos verbos relacionados a la escuela. Vamos a ver um, como las partes que podemos encontrar en una escuela, los salones y cosas así. Luego, cosas que encontramos dentro del salón de clases, de classroom, ahí sí vamos a ver como eh, objetos. Luego vamos a ver palabras que tengan que ver con teaching, con educar, con dar clases. So we are going to have like um, different words related to different uh, things, but talking also about school. So we have this word, absent. Boarding school. Brilliant. Clever. College. Elementary school. Hard working. Inattentive. intelligent and in this case if you can see we have brilliant clever and intelligent and i know that you know the meaning of those words and uh, you can think they are uh, very similar but uh, tomorrow we are going to make like the difference between brilliant clever and intelligent Son tres palabras que al traducirlas pueden llegar a tener el mismo significado, pero mañana vamos a hacer como um, la diferencia entre brilliant, clever, and intelligent. Vamos a ver por qué son diferentes y en qué contexto lo podemos utilizar. Then we have kindergarten. Primary school.
private school. Public school. Secondary school. To answer, to ask, to attend school, to expel. To flunk a test. To know. To learn. To punish. To study, to suspend, So this is the first part. I'm going to do another one, uh, but in this case, it's related just the things that we can find. I mean, in this case, we're going to have the second one that, that is the places that we can find in a school. En la segunda, vamos a ver eh, lugares que podemos encontrar dentro de la escuela. So in this case, we are going to divide and um, here I'm going to write a school. So in this case, we are going to have assembly hall. Canteen. Careers center. Class, classroom, garden, team, head teachers, homeroom. Infirmary, laboratory, language lab, library, playground. Principal's office, registration room, teacher's lounge, the staff room. 
and yard. So uh, we have just two of the different vocabulary that we are going to have because we have four. Tenemos apenas dos de los cuatro eh, pequeños vocabularios que vamos a estar viendo sobre la escuela. Because in this case, I, um, I try to give you more words that you can use in this uh, situation or in this topic. In, in, in this case, it's not just the same words that we learn at the beginning, like uh, different things that we can use on the school. In this case, we are going to have four different uh, categories. In the first one, we can have like uh, different spaces in which we can study and also we can find um, also some verbs that we can use in, in, in this uh, topic. Then we're going to talk about the places that we can find inside the school. Then things that we can find inside the classroom. But in this case, I'm going to uh, like write the less common words that we can uh, find, not just the most common words that we um, already know about the school. And then for the next one, I mean, for the last one, we're going to uh, use some words that we can use um, when we are talking about teaching. Así que para la siguiente, que es la de dentro del salón de clases, vamos a utilizar las menos comunes. No vamos a utilizar las que siempre, utiliz las que siempre aprendemos cuando estamos hablando de esos temas o vocabularios, sino que vamos a ver las menos comunes. Eh, in this case, we are not going to talk about a pencil, pen, pencil case, bag, eraser, notebook, book, and all of that things. We're going to see another one. And then we're going to see some words that we can use when we're talking about teaching. Remember, tomorrow we are going to talk about those words. And I guess I'm going to add the other two vocabularies uh, right now. Voy a agregar los otros dos vocabularios um, cuando terminemos la sesión para que ya estén listas para mañana, para que mañana solo las vayamos leyendo y, y vayamos viendo los significados en español. Because you are going to do an exercise tomorrow with those uh, words. Vamos a hacer un pequeño ejercicio mañana utilizando algunas de estas palabras que vamos a aprender eh, su significado en español. It's a very short uh, exercise, but um, it is related to the topic of school. Así que vamos a ir viendo un poco las palabras que ya utilizamos y vamos a hacer ese pequeño ejercicio. We are going to do the exercise related to the school. And also we are going to have a reading a practice. Yes, we are going to have a reading practice. Vamos a hacer una práctica de lectura. Vamos a hacer el último knowledge check y vamos a revisar lo del de examen final mañana. Porque ya mañana es la última sesión, así que vamos a hacer eso. First, we are going to um, see the vocabulary in Spanish. Then we are going to have the exercise. After that, we are going to have the reading exercise and the knowledge check. Uh, the last knowledge check, and then the review of the of the last exam or the final exam. So we are going to have four different activities for tomorrow. Vamos a tener cuatro actividades diferentes para mañana para eh, utilizar este vocabulario y también para leer eh, la práctica que está en el uh, en la plataforma. Y vamos a ver el examen final para los que no han completado esa parte. So. We are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow in the last session of this course. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow. 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 See you. Bye. See you.